my name is Erin, and today we're on day 19. We'll be talking about grace, but first, let's meditate on God's Word. What is so amazing about grace, this grace that John Newton was so passionate about when he wrote those famous lyrics to Amazing Grace back in 1779 that we're still singing in churches across the world today. Every line and verse of that song is so rich with the truth of God's mercy and grace. In Christ, mercy and grace are like two sides of the same coin. Grace is a gift we don't deserve, while mercy is not getting the punishment we deserve. I love the third stanza of that historical song. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, his mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. My chains and your chains are gone because of the grace of God we have been set free. I find myself struggling to comprehend this truth. It becomes easier for me to grasp God's abundant grace when I allow myself to comprehend the true depth of my need. Even on my best day, I'm a wretched sinner standing before a holy and righteous God. To abound in sin is by far the worst you and I could ever do. The word abound defines the limit of our restricted abilities. And although we feel like our sins rise over us like the highest tidal wave, nevertheless, it has definable boundaries. We must remember that the grace of God is infinite and eternal. It has no beginning, so it can have no end. Grace is a boundless attribute of God. I've been set free. A wonderful description of the amazing grace of God is to be found in Romans 11:6. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were grace, would no longer be grace. You see, grace can't be bought or earned. If it could be, it wouldn't be grace. We, the receiver of the gift, have no client claim upon it. We aren't do anything. God gives grace to us out of the lavish love he has for us. What incredible freedom that allows us. When we sin, it leaves us feeling guilty. It cripples our ability to do what we should. We need that saving grace, daily forgiveness, and God's mighty power. When we have placed our faith and trust in Jesus, we can live without fear of God's judgment. In grace, God gives us the only thing we really need that can save us, himself. The Spirit of Christ transforms us and enables us to trust, follow, obey, and love God more intimately as his plans and purposes for our lives unfold. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. There are three main characteristics of divine grace. First, it is eternal. Grace was planned before it was used. It was purposed before it was conveyed. 2 Timothy 1.9, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Second, it is free, for none of us purchased it. Those in Christ are being justified freely by the grace of God. Third, it is sovereign. God bestows it upon whom he pleases. Nowhere does the glory of God's free and sovereign grace shine brighter than in the unworthiness, unlikeliness of us, the common sinner. And like a flood, his mercy reigns. Think of it, amazing grace and mercy of God's limitless forgiveness. It is like a flood that washes over me and you daily. How thankful I am for that cleansing that makes me stand clean and pure before a holy, perfect God. It's so difficult to wrap my mind around the truth that my sins, 
All of my sins, past, present, and future, have been totally covered by God's sacrifice he made on the cross. His shed blood covers it all. We can stand in confidence without fear because in Jesus Christ, we have been received and accepted. Unending love, amazing grace. What kind of unending love announces that unless we are saved by grace, we cannot be saved at all? Apart from Christ and the unspeakable gift of God's grace, we would be left in a guilty and hopeless state. Amazing Grace recognizes that God the Father is the fountain of all grace. He purposed it in himself, the everlasting covenant of redemption. God the Son is the only avenue to grace. We are never alone in our struggle. God never grows discouraged or tired. He never leaves us alone in our ability to conquer temptations of this fallen world. Our gracious Father is determined for us to experience all he has for us because of the unending sacrifice he made and continues to make for us every day. There is nothing that was or will be as amazing as his grace. I, I believe understanding the grace of God offered through Jesus is a lifelong journey which we will never fully comprehend this side of heaven. I do, however, understand where that journey begins. It's by placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I realized my need for a savior when I was in fourth grade. It was here at this church that my Sunday school teacher shared God's amazing love and grace for me that compelled me to go home that night and pour my little 10-year-old heart asking God to forgive me for my sins and recognizing I desperately needed him. God met me that night and has never once let go of me. He continues to strengthen me with his presence as I seek him out. One of the greatest joys I've ever experienced is when God invites me into a prayer time when someone recognizes their need for Christ. With tearful eyes, they share how they desperately need him and want to follow him. There is nothing like that joy I feel when someone makes that commitment to trust Jesus. I understand the joy I'm feeling is because I know that person will never be the same, and I'm so excited to see all God has for them as they deepen their dependence and relationship with Him. If you haven't placed your faith and trust in Christ, I encourage you to quiet your heart, meditate on God's Word, seek His forgiveness, and ask God to give you that amazing grace found only in Him that will change your life forever. I'd like to close today with a portion of a prayer out of the book titled, The Valley of the Vision. O oh Lord God, teach me to know that grace precedes, accompanies, and follows my salvation, that it sustains the redeemed soul, that not one link of its chain can ever break from Calvary's cross. Wave upon wave of grace reaches me, deals with my sin, washes me clean, renews my heart, strengthens my will, draws out my affection, kindles a flame in my soul, rules throughout my inner man, consecrates my every thought, word, work, teaches me thy immeasurable love. Thank you for joining us today, and I pray you walk in God's grace.